Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Talks with the Green Bay Doulas. I'm Emily Jacobson. Welcome to summer and outside offices. Today I wanted to talk about uh, membrane sweeps or stripping of the membranes. What does that mean? What can you expect? And will it put you into labor? Those are the things I want to cover. So let's start with the basics. So ACOG suggests that you no provider does a membrane sweep before 39 weeks. Um, so if you're 37, 36 weeks and you're like, oh, I just want to get this baby out, um, it, your provider has been guided not to do so until 39 weeks. So that's something you can always request 39 weeks and later. So what they're doing with the membrane sweep, uh, there's two, two ways we think about it. So um, I think of it like a jello shot in a sense where if you have a jello shot and you tip it upside down, shake it, nothing happens. But if you break the seal around the jello shot, tip it upside down and jiggle it, usually it loosens it. Another way to think about it is peeling an orange. Um, you're, you're breaking kind of the, the way the orange adheres to the rind, adheres to the orange itself. So kind of breaking that up a little bit. So what's happening is that your provider is doing a cervical check and they're kind of, it's kind of a rougher check in a sense that they are literally inside your cervix and they're kind of just opening up that area for you, right? So a few things happen when that happens. One, it releases a ton of hormones from your cervix. Um, usually uh, it will cause some spotting it can. It can also cause some cramping and sometimes you can have contractions because of the sweep but they may not necessarily turn into labor. Um, I think of getting a sweep done also like a loose tooth. Yes, it might be loose, but is it ready to be actually be pulled out is the question, right? So if a sweep is going to work, as in having a sweep done puts you into labor, will happen anywhere from a few hours to 24 hours after the sweep. Um, if you haven't gone into labor after kind of that 24 hour mark, chances are pretty slim that the sweep would have caused you to go into labor. Okay. Um, what you might find is you have some really, uh, I call it an irritable uterus. So you're having contractions, but they're not getting stronger, longer, or closer together. So then you might ask, well, what is the point of a sweep then? So a sweep can be good for a few things. One, it can thin your cervix out a little bit more. It can help dilate you a little bit more. There's things that are happening that's not necessarily labor driven, but can help uh, just kind of prepare your body a little bit better for when you do go into labor. So some women say it's very uncomfortable. Other women say it doesn't bother them. Um, I think that has to do with the position of the cervix. So when we talk in our childbirth education class about it, um, usually your cervix is either posterior, midline, or anterior. So if your um, provider has to find your cervix by going in and then feeling around back in a sense, that means your cervix is really posterior. And that's okay. Sometimes cervixes will stay posterior until you're in labor. Sometimes um, they just naturally have moved forward on their own. Everyone's different in what that looks like. But if you find like you had a harder cervical check or that was a lot rougher, it was probably because your cervix was much more posterior. So that's kind of the lowdown on cervical checks. Now, uh, people might say like, why would I even get one done? It technically, although it is invasive because your provider has their hand inside of you for a few minutes, um, it is pretty much the least type invasive way of an induction as you could have because it will either work or it won't. Um, now the risks to it. Um, the risks is that sometimes your water may break and if that were to happen you would just go straight over to labor and delivery and start um, either seeing if your body will take over on its own and go into labor or start an induction process utilizing possibly Pitocin. Um, there's a risk for infection obviously when any time there's something inserted into um, your body uh, but those are uh, things that you have to weigh like what are your costs and benefits of it so again we go back to brain what would be the benefits of doing it what would be the risks of doing it um, what are the alternatives um, what's your intuition and your gut telling you and what if you did nothing what would be next or maybe not at 39 weeks maybe at 40 weeks I would do a, a membrane sweep so it's really up to you and what you want to do I hope that helps have a great day, guys. Bye.